Welcome to Miles of Music. I'm Bob Miles. I'm here with the incredible guitarist Carl Filippia. Carl, I mean incredible, sir. Really. Ah, really. My honor to have you on. Thank really, you. really great. Uh, your style of music is fusion, it's jazz and rock and so forth, right? Sure. All different types of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, melting pot. You're from Baltimore, mm -hmm. you, you said, right? Yes. What's a Baltimore music scene like? Did, did you were you able to get that melting pot ex exclusively from Baltimore? Well, uh, I don't. Well, I guess it had to because we're all from Baltimore. But um, I think what you're getting at is, yeah. you know, it, does the scene reflect what I'm doing? Right, right. And right, um, right. you know, that's a tough question. Um, in some cases, I, I would say no. It, it leaves a lot to be desired. I think yeah. now, I'd like to hear more of you know adventurous music going on there and opportunities to play it. Okay. So um, th there's some things that could be a little bit hipper, so to speak. However, the musicians in Baltimore there are some killing musicians. We mm -hmm. all know Dennis Chambers from right, Baltimore. Right, right. I can go on and on, you know, about the list of right. do great you, players. Do you find they leave after they get some fame? And don't well, come Dennis back. Dennis didn't. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So, okay. and you know, I really don't have a track on you know everybody and you know where they're living now or whatever to yeah. really answer that. Yeah, and you're one of the bigger names, I would think, in, in that area, I, right? I don't. I, I yeah. never. <laughs> slip you don't I know. Bigger name, you <laughs> okay. Know. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get medium to, get to the medium time here. <laughs> okay. Well, a lot of people know of you. I, when I say Carl oh, cool. X coming on, people came out today right, that's neat. to the show. Yeah, it's yeah. very cool. Very cool. That's cool. Yeah. Now, uh, your styles that you've been playing, you said were jazz and rock mm -hmm. mostly. Uh, any any flamenco, classical? Does classical? Yeah, I, I studied some classical for maybe um, you know a year or two at at a, at a college, and um, strict classical yeah, guitar. Yeah, and I loved it. Um, it was once again, you know, when when you're young and you have all that time, mm -hmm. those are great assets, mm -hmm. and. Um, I was studying, you know, once a week with um, with Walt, you know, um, with Walt Namath, mm -hmm. a great player from Buddy Rich's band, um, and I was studying a uh, classical guitar and, and music theory, mm -hmm. and playing six, six nights a week, you know, uh, doing covers of all rock tunes. Mm -hmm. That was great. It was in, like three worlds going on at the same mm -hmm. time. Wow. But when you're, you know, in your teens or twenties, you've got the time and energy to, to do all that. Yeah. But eventually along the way, um, you know, you, you've got to be faced with, <laughs> pick one, baby. You yeah, know? You, um, you only have so much time. Yeah, only right. so much time. Right. And, you know, to, to really master any one of those, let alone three, you know, that, that was a, a, a moment, you know, of, okay, once again, you know, pick one. However, out of that, um, I think I play more finger style, maybe not articulating every note, but I love to play chords and a lot of things with my fingers. So mm. that came out of playing nylon string guitar right, for a while. Right. So, man, that's why I'm into everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, your approach today, how do you approach it? Do you think back to the time you studied and, and look at it as an academic approach, or do you just, are you more creative today, do you feel? You mean how I write songs? Or, or what uh, just your approach to, to improvising. To improvising. I think that I'd always like to think that at in some point I'm always going to like just fall back on some kind of blues thing just because of the the connection to the heart mm -hmm. and I'm aware of especially in this moment when we're we've got so much information for you know um, stuff that I never had as a kid you know yeah. you know we've got you know the scales technology. upon yeah. scales and you can study with any great player just buy his DVD or videotape, whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of what I'm hearing is a lot of people playing information. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware of that, and I'm trying to be aware of it to go, cool, I dig all that information, but what's going to connect, what's going to be more soulful, hit the heart? And mm -hmm. I would like to find that nice, well, I, I think maybe not we're all looking for it, but the players that I like seem to have both of those worlds. They appeal to my intellect, mm -hmm. you know, they're very interesting, you know, harmonically and melodically. And yet, it, it's songs that you want to hear, and they hit you in uh, the heart or the soul or whatever. Right, right. I think it's hard to do. Not yeah. many people do that. Yeah. Sometimes there's guys that play great 
information, you yeah, know. And they miss you know. the song. And that's once again why I love the Beatles and some of that stuff. It, it's not jazz. Yeah. I could care less. Mm -hmm. Do you, you find me, what I listen to? I love listening to the Beatles. It's great music. Sure it is. If it's great, it's great. It's great, it's great. Yeah. It's it, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Do you find yourself somebody said that once. <laughs> Us, that's it. <laughs> yeah, we made no. it up. Do you find yourself ever practicing scales? Or doing very it? rarely anymore. Really? Matter of fact, um, the one thing good about teaching is that sometimes I ha I have to to just you know get a, a, a student interested in mm -hmm. uh, not interested in, to get a student to uh, you know at least see where the notes are mm -hmm. or to play let him hear it. Right. Um, but I'm always right on it, going look. Uh, yeah. This is not it, right, you know. Right, right. Uh, specifically with blues, who are some of the blues people you would tell people to? Oh, to Albert King to? would be my, you know, that uh, the Desert Island guy, you know. Let's right. love Albert King, King of the Blues. Yeah. That's it. Get that. You're done. Mm -hmm. Then you've okay. got Clapton and Jimmy Page and all that. <laughs> okay. Stevie Ray, you know right, that whole right, rock right, blues right. The Texas scene. thing. Right. Whatever. Right. 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 It's in that CD. Yeah. You know. That's yeah. where they got it. Yeah, <laughs> that is. Yeah, isn't you it? Know? Yeah. Now, did you find yourself going to Clapton and figuring out his? Oh yeah, and everything. And, sure. Yeah. Um, I know. I, I could do a cream. Uh, uh, a tribute if I wanted to. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. actually doing a Hendrix tribute, by the way. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's Sounds been fun. Great. We do stuff pretty much note for note. Sounds great. Let's go to your song so people can hear what we're it. talking about. Thanks, cool. Carl. Thank okay. you.
I'm back with guitarist Carl Filippia. Carl, you have some books out on Mel Bay. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what's involved in the books. Um, the book is called Rock Fusion Improvising, okay. and I actually go over a lot of um, concepts that you would use in jazz. Um, and I just apply it to a, more of a, a modal thing or a blues-oriented thing. And then part of the book does get a little more you know, adventure, so to speak, you know, without going into detail. But there's some cool concepts in it. A lot of um, play-along tracks, okay. you know, with the band. Uh, with the, the band that was here. Oh, great. You know, okay. That, that you'll okay. see. Okay, okay. And chord progressions as yeah, well. Everything. And you, yeah, everything. Yeah. It's and, neat. I wish I had one. I would and, you, and your approach, too. I mean, basically, yeah, sure. it's your approach in, in the My entire My approach. Book. It's everything, every lick I've stolen from every <laughs> okay. other guitar player is in there. Okay, <laughs> okay. With your name on it now. <laughs> right. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, and people can get that from Mel Bay. From Mel Bay, yeah. Mel Bay, right. yeah, I'm sure it's... fine music yeah. stores everywhere. And it's in Japan. Yeah, they just did oh, um, yeah. uh, a Japanese version of it, and, and it's awesome. The, the printing there looks different, too. Like, it, it's, more, it's bound. I mean, it just looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's a trip to Very see cool. your first thing, and yeah. everything's now, in Japanese. Can you read name. that? Oh, no, I don't know what <laughs> it is. <laughs> I can imagine what it says. You know. Now, videos, mm -hmm. instructional videos. I have an instructional video at, um, that's with E-Line Productions. That's more of a, a local thing, but they okay. can get that from me. Your website. Uh, from my website, Okay, yes. and what type of things are you teaching on that? It, Jeff uh, Eline was a student of mine, and he does independent films. He's pretty prominent in that area, and uh, he was one of my students. And there were, there were about ten or twelve things that I taught him personally that he said, "You know, I've never seen any of these concepts in um, in any videos. I'd like to do a, a, an instructional video just about those ten things, mm -hmm. and it's called Use What You Got." Okay, great. That's pretty cool. Okay, as far as your equipment, you had two separate amps. Mm -hmm. Why and, and what's the difference between each and what do they do? Uh, I really, uh, almost two of anything sounds good to me. Um, it looks like good. One, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I'm really doing it for the sound, actually. Okay. But um, they could even be identical, but I like having uh, the four tens in the Fender basement and the. Uh, why is that opposed to 212s, which is most well, common? Well, I mean, I would have it with 212s, too, you know, okay. because that was in the, okay. in the van on the way up. Okay. So, you know, it, uh, and the other one has a 15 in it. So I like some frequencies that may not, you know, might be missing in one amp or going to come through in the other, and the sound of both of them one at the same time okay. just uh, okay. really makes it sound what's really the, fat. What's the other and, and it's much louder. It is <laughs> you know, on 11. What's the other amp besides the Fender Basement? What, which one? Uh, you mean the other you have to, the yeah. vibroverb. The vibroverb. Vibre and, and what does that That's do? That's got a 15 That's in it. A 15? Yeah. More for bass? Or? Yeah, you know, I think, I think we think yeah. that, but I think that's true. I mean, a lot of bass amps have tens. Yeah. Don't the old yeah. S, uh, what were those? Ampeg amps used to have tens in them. I'm mm. going blank now. Not sure. Not sure. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't really subscribe to that. You know, a 15 is going to be yeah. real bassy. Yeah. It doesn't sound okay. real bassy at all. Yeah. I, I know a lot of the uh, rock... As a matter of fact, Steve Ray Vaughan used a, a vibroverb at some point. Oh, he did? In his career, yeah. And oh. I mean, that oh, doesn't well, sound particularly he, bassy to me. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. He used a basement, too, I think, right? I think he's probably used one of everything. Yeah, also, one of everything, know. yeah, yeah. Now, uh, how important is sound and effects to you? I know some rock players live for it. Sometimes I think it gets in the way of them being better players. They rely more on the effects. What do you think about that? Uh, I, I just use it to en enhance stuff. I mean, you know, when I use a delay, you don't hear it. Like if, when, you, when we play my music, I don't think you're going to hear any wash of notes. Mm -hmm. But there is a delay on it. And it's just so light that it just almost sounds like a reverb effect to me. Okay. So even though I use effects, it, yeah, I mean, you can abuse and use and abuse anything. Mm -hmm. I like to think that I use them fairly tastefully. Okay, you know? okay, okay. I notice watching the band, mm -hmm. the band really interacts mm -hmm. superbly. It's wonderful. The rhythm's happening with the two of you. I've noticed, you and the drummer, that is, I've noticed you get on a riff, and they're listening, and they're mm -hmm. going with you. There's your key word. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's listening, it. right, listening, right, right. That's it. Now, do you play with these guys a lot? A lot, to be, yeah, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so it doesn't happen on like yeah. the second night. Yeah. And even if it looks like we're not listening, um, it's just from playing with each other so so much that you know um, it, it it just um, I'm not going to say it's not a lot of surprises, but uh, 
it, it's beautiful to play, yeah. you know, yeah. when you're really playing with people for a long time. There's something that occurs as a result of playing with people for a long time that doesn't happen when you play with different people. However, at the same time, because um, we play with some other drummers, uh, you know, uh, like Dennis, if he, when he plays a gig, you know, which, which hasn't been for a while. But another guy, Todd Harrison, we play with, is another great drummer. Um, because we don't play with him, and he's, he's a great drummer, there's some things that are, th that just take it in a completely different direction. It's yeah. actually doable too. Yeah, yeah, I dig, I dig the new yeah. new guy also once in a while. Yeah. You know, but yeah. overall, I I try to make it the four of us. Okay, okay. You do a Hendrix tribute mm -hmm. at theater. We just started and so doing it. Yeah. You did. Okay. Yeah. So what is that like a two-hour show? It's or? literally yeah, like a two-hour show, and we have okay. the. Uh, the screen in the back with all the images, <laughs> and I use like stacks of Marshalls. It's awesome. Wow. It's just wow. fun. Well, wow, it's and loud. The, oh, it's <laughs> cranking. Yeah. yeah. It's great. So, do you do note for note Hendrix, or do you just pretty do much? I would say like maybe much. eighty percent. The the other ten or twenty percent where it wouldn't be note for note would be say uh, uh, a tune maybe like Voodoo Child, where if you heard him play it every time, it's going to be different. But okay. Purple Haze, okay. if you're covering that tune, so to speak. I'm going to do the solo like the record. Okay. I'm not out to make it anything different. Now, do you try to get the same effects he had in the yeah, same exact with, sound? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. although I've been using a rat pedal and not a fuzz face, so, you know, I mean, I've given myself leeway to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, right. change but it, it but up a little enough. bit what I want. It's not, um, it's a tribute. It's not, uh, we're not impersonating, you know. Okay. So I'm not going to have a headband on right, it. Right, right, <laughs> sure, know. sure, sure. And it's well received, I take it. Yeah, I mean, the places we play, they're okay. pretty much packed. Okay, what about the, the vocals? Do you no, sing? Steve sings, so oh. that's great. Steve not only plays in the Indian band, but he plays upright bass. Yeah. And Diggs playing Hendrix. So today yeah. I'm going, Well, how could you not? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you yeah, got the like, gig. Like when you're 14, you know, garage yeah, band. Fun. You're in the band. We're you're doing the Hendrix. Band. Yeah. <laughs> now, to learn the Hendrix songs, you took them note for note. I'll tell you, records. that was beyond what I thought, and I think the band too. I think it was beyond what we thought it would take to do that. Yeah, it, it sounds like, oh, you're, you know, oh yeah, you're jazz guys. You're yeah. just doing some purple haze, yeah. doing about 25 Hendrix tunes, because you know, after the first couple, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah that, it was hard. It now, was a lot of work. Is this something since you had a vast knowledge of Hendrix from a boy? You just yeah, pulled uh, yeah. into it. Uh, well, actually, I thought I did. I mean, I did know a lot of Hendrix from being a kid. And over the years, we've always done a Hendrix tune or two in our set. Mm -hmm. And over the years, he had enough people go, when are you going to do a whole night of that? Or when are you going to put out a record of mm -hmm. that? Yeah. I just I said, you know, we know a whole bunch already. Yeah. Let's learn 10 more and yeah. do a show. And yeah. it's funny because the band, and, then, and, and I can th see why Paul would uh, feel this way more than any of us, because he's probably the least involved, so to speak, okay. even though we do tunes that feature him on right. sax. We do that Rainy Day, Dream Away, right. and we do a couple where yeah. we play them instrumental. It's guitar. With him. I, it's, I, guitar. I, it's mostly guitar. Right, right. But he's like, are you sure we should be doing this? Yeah. And um, I'm going, well, if it doesn't fly, we yeah. won't do it again. Sure, sure. So we did one of these gigs, and it was packed with like four or 500 people or yeah. whatever. And at the end of the yeah. night, and, I, and not to interpret like, like we're mercenary, we're right. into money, but as I'm right. paying Paul, I'm going, like, let's see. Jazz, $400. <laughs> and he's right, right. 4, 000, right, right. And he's right, going, right. Later, I'm here, Jack. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Later. It Carl, it's an honor to have okay. you on. Thank you so cool. much, Thank sir. You, Thank man. you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay.